So with the ninth pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Leonard Floyd, linebacker, Georgia. How about that, huh? Chicago moving up in round one, two spots to take pass rusher Leonard Floyd. The first time the Bears have used their top pick on a linebacker since 2000 when they took some guy whose name you might recognize, Brian Urlacher. How about that, huh? Welcome to Draft Grades Live presented by Bud Light. I'm Mark Iztook with former Pro Bowl running back Maurice Jones-Drew and future Hall of Fame scout Daniel Jeremiah. They have like a wing and can for uh, You know, there are, some, that... there are some personnel guys there. I think you may be a little ambitious well, with that you'll description. See. Career's still young, huh? Uh, what a wild and crazy week it was in Chicago. Time to break it all down and assign our own draft grades to uh, all the festivities that we enjoyed in the Windy City. And MJD, I know you were watching closely when the Bears made that move to get Floyd. How do you grade the trade, though, wow. to pick him up? You know, I, I thought it when they traded, I'm like, oh, okay, they're going to go get Shaq Lawson. You know, or, oh, okay, they're going to get this person. I just thought when you went up to trade to get Leonard Floyd, he's athletic, yes, but his production wasn't there. And, I, and we talked with DJ off air about this, and he was saying he was out of position. And to me, it's like, if I get a guy, I have to, especially trading up in the top 10 to go get one, he has to get me production. So I guess they're going to put him at outside, let him rush the passer, but – is he going to be that guy that's going to change around? They kind of did that last year with Kevin White, and you saw how that played out. It didn't really play out that well. It's going to play out well this this year because Kevin White's healthy, and I've heard he's been phenomenal, so don't sleep on him. Number two, Leonard Floyd was playing inside linebacker. He's really an outside linebacker. When he watch him outside, you see the sacks come. He can beat you with speed. He's got a nice up-and-under move inside. And to me, he's an athletic guy that could cover a tight end if you need him to. They have Pernell McPhee, who's going to be that power rusher. They were in need of some speed, somebody with some real juice coming off the other side, and he was the best speed guy in this draft. Yeah, it's certainly fun watching his tape at Georgia. It's going to be interesting to see how he impacts that defense, but when you look at the second pick that the Chicago Bears made, they decided to go offense. Kansas State's Cody Whitehair, somebody who can protect Jay Cutler. How difficult will that transition be, and how good of a fit is he in Chicago's own blocking scheme? I, I love Cody White here. I, to me, I thought when you look at interior linemen, I thought Ryan Kelly was far and away the best one, the center that went uh, to the Colts in the first round. But then I'd have Cody White here right behind him. So to get him where they did in the second round, I thought was tremendous value. Yeah, this guy can play. He, he flat out. He's going to play guard. He's probably going to kick some butt. Him and Chris Long is going to be special. All right, enjoy watching those uh, guys play along the line in Kansas State. But how about this lineup? All the draft picks, certainly a team focusing on defense, six of nine picks on oh. defensive players. But, MJD, no surprise, you're a fan of Jordan Howard. Out no of question. I think he comes in right away. He starts. You, you notice what they're starting to do. They're trying to build this team physical. to be physical, run downhill. You got the monsters in the midway. They're trying to get that back. I also love, I also love Jonathan Bullard. We talked about that on Path to the Draft. That kid is going to be an inside pass rusher and destroy guards. All right, so it sounds like you're buying this draft. What's your grade for the Bears? I give him an A, and to me the Bullard pick is kind of the linchpin there because I think he could be, end up being one of the tremendous value picks in this draft because you can kick him inside, he can run. He's going to destroy guards. They're not going to be able to block him. With now they have some, some speed coming off the edge, watch for Bullard to have a big impact. I give this team an A for their draft. Okay, an A for the Bears. We're going to stay in the division and move to the Detroit Lions. And with the 16th pick, they go Ohio State offensive lineman Taylor Decker. And MJD, what do you like about his game? Is he the kind of guy you would have liked to have run behind? No question. I, I think he plays with an attitude. And we, it's the play that, to me, that a lot of people don't talk about. It's the play where Jalen Smith got hurt. He gave him that extra, that last violent shove. And that's what you want your offensive lineman to have, that nastiness to him. Sorry that Jalen Smith got hurt, yes. But as an offensive lineman, you have to play well. You have to play physical and nasty. I thought maybe in the first round they go defensive tackle, but good on them because they waited and they got Sean Robinson in the second round, which to me, tremendous value. This is a guy, it maybe looks like he's 35, oh, but he is just young, turned 21. he's still developing. You look at him block a kick right here just to show you how athletic he is. I think Chris Kassirk, their D-line coach, is the perfect match for Sean Robinson. He's going to end up being a big-time value. Yeah, he's one of those guys that uh, just fun to watch, not just in college, but in high school, too, out of my hometown of Fort Worth, Texas, Arlington Heights. How about this guy, Eric Ebron? Excited to see him. Perfection. Get that ball back to us, Ashawn Robinson. Hashtag welcome to the family. Uh, so certainly some enthusiasm in Detroit among that pick. And as we look at the rest of their picks, DJ, your thoughts on the overall line? Well, you can see right now, new general manager comes in, has a background from New England, and he wanted to get the offensive line taken care of. Taylor Decker, Graham Glasgow, who's a nice center, and then you also got Joe Dahl from Washington State. So they made some investments up front. 
They got a developmental quarterback, Jake Rudock. I don't think the ceiling's very high there. But Antoine Williams, a linebacker from Georgia Southern, mm-hmm. he's, he's got some thump to him. He was a fun player to watch. All right, so overall you see a team that made the playoffs the year before last, not this past year. They want to get back to the postseason. Is this the kind of draft that can help them? What's your grade? I gave them a B-plus, and I thought they did a great job protecting their quarterback, right? So you, have, you lose Megatron, and now your quarterback has to be accurate. He has to stay in the pocket. He can't haul it up late. You do a great job protecting him. You run the ball more. I have a great friend named Brian Callahan, who's the quarterback's coach. I got a chance to talk to him about it. They're really confident in what they did. They're excited. They're going to run the ball well. They're going to play action pass and let the receivers get open. All right, so you're excited about that team's draft overall. Let's turn to the Green Bay Packers mm. now and your excitement for one of your fellow UCLA Bruins, the oh, Packers Oh, here we pick. go. I'm just there saying. We go. Defensive Every... tackle, Kenny Clark. Year after year, that's what we do. We put out talent. I'm just trying to tell you, DJ, <laughs> eight guys. This is just one of them. You guys got a lot of – you, you have more wins or more guys picked? Uh, I don't. It doesn't matter. We're still trying to find out where they're It was young. ridiculous Kenny how many Clark come on, come on. When you watch Kenny Clark, he just dominates all offensive lineman left to right. You put him next to Dayton Jones, a guy that he played what he's comfortable with. You lose B.J. Raji. He's going to go in there and clog up the middle. And they had to do something because Clay Matthews wasn't doing it for him in the middle. So the I'm just thinking about this now. You've got you've got Kenny Clark and then and you've got Dayton Jones, UCLA. But then you've got Clay Matthews and, and is Perry still there as well? So they've yeah. got kind of this UCLA USC mix in this front seven right now. I, I don't know what they got going on. I know I couldn't be in that locker room. You, you, would, you couldn't handle it? Couldn't <laughs> we don't yourself? do things like that. We, I, don't, I just... I don't like them at all. All right, well, they add to their roster with a Bruin with their first pick. With their second pick, Green Bay goes tackle Jason Spriggs. And, DJ, how much will Aaron Rodgers benefit from his protection? Well, Spriggs somebody I think can flop sides. So he gives you that flexibility. He can play on the left and play on the right. He's got really, really quick feet. He's got a little bit of a temperament to him. Now, he will play high on occasion. He needs to work on his pad level. And sometimes you see a little bit of tightness, a little bit of stiffness in his game. But, look. They need more depth in that offensive line, and his he gives them the flexibility to get their best five on the field. By the way, we see the stat right there, 4-9, 4-40 uh, at the combine. You know, a lot of us NFL media folks ran and couldn't crack five. Didn't so quite get there. Oh. Uh, all right, let's segue to this board. That's the rest of the uh, Packers draft class. And you look at some linebackers in the third and fourth round, DJ. Big fan of Kyler Fackrell out of Utah State. He's really athletic and bend around the edge. And then Blake Martinez, an inside linebacker, which allows who we were just talking about, allows Clay Matthews to be full-time outside. He can man the middle. Yeah, well, looking at their draft class overall, I know you're going you're gonna to say I'm an easy teacher, but I gave him my A. One, because they took a Bruin, and two, <laughs> Jason. the words right out of my right, mouth. I think, I think Jason Spriggs comes in. Yes, he's going to be stiff, but they like those big offensive linemen, guys that, you know, you have Aaron Rodgers, you have the protector guy. He doesn't have to run block much because they're going to pass the ball majority of the time. Eddie Lacy's a lean, mean, fighting machine. He better be run blocking hey, he's, a little bit. He's, he's they're taking gonna run. to your challenges, man. Well, yeah, he, he definitely he, he took some time off and did some great things, but I'm talking about Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> it's not about Eddie Lacy. We're here to protect the golden boy. The one, him, the one himself. Yeah. The and, guy and so who he's, sacked fifth most out of all QBs last exactly. year. Exactly. stay on his feet. You have to stay on your feet. And then you, you, you solidify your defense. I think that was the other thing that you see. Minnesota comes into that division. They come with a solid defense. They, wins it, they win it. Now they go back and do it again. Okay. You uh, kind of set us up for a transition to Minnesota, their division rival. They go offense in the first round. A lot of pre-draft discussion about who they would end up grabbing. It ends up being Laquan Treadwell out of Ole Miss. Uh, Certainly a receiver that is ready to play at the next level. Ready to help a passing game that ranked next to last in 2015. I'm honored, man. The Vikings. Man, I'm just proud proud to be a part of the Vikings right now. Um, You know, it's just a journey. It's part of the journey. And uh, just got to stay strong and keep fighting. All right, MJD, we get to watch this guy up close in person at the Combine, oh. especially running the gauntlet. Silky smooth. I tell you what, it, it, there's something, too, when you hear a receiver or catch the ball and you don't hear anything. It's like, that, that's what it was like. And when you watch the way you watch the way he plays, he's a big body. He needs They need a big body in that cold. They can go up and get the ball. And you're talking about a guy that has enough speed, as we see there, to run behind guys. He's the guy that's going to make everyone around him better. Teddy Bridgewater is going to have a huge year because of him. All right, so Teddy Bridgewater, obviously excited to have a guy who can catch passes. Oh, now we're done. in the sixth round, DJ. They go to another guy who can catch passes playing in Europe. Can he catch him on this side of the pond? Well, look, this is going to be a fun project for the Vikings. Moritz Boehringer out of Germany. First international player to get drafted over here. And I'll tell you what, look, the competition over there, it's, it's like a high school. But you see a guy that's six foot four. The time's legit, ran in the four fours. It's going to be a long-term project, but a fun one there for them to take take on. 
I'm rooting for him. I'm <laughs> looking forward to seeing the jersey sales. Uh, Real question. Let's look at the rest of the purple draft. MJD, who stands out on this? Well, list? I like McKenzie Alexander in the second round. Obviously, they, they, you have, uh, they have struggled with corner a little bit. You put him out there, he can play that type of system. And then, uh, to be honest with you, I, I think Jerron, uh, Jerron Curse. I think there's a lot of people don't like him, but he's going to be a physical safety. They like to play that cover three. They need a banger. Hopefully, he comes down and he can do that. Are people sleeping on this team and on this draft? I mean, what's your overall grade for that? Well, I think it was solid. I gave him a B. I, I think it was just it's it's all day passing. It's something Maurice would love to have had there at UCLA. A B, you can work with that. You can win with no, that. It's not elite, but a B it, but plus. It, but it makes it makes it, it makes passing. it happen. Are you kidding? Just because they didn't take a quarterback. There's not enough quarterbacks. There they don't need a quarterback. They already there. got a quarterback. I mean, it's because they didn't take a quarterback. They didn't trade the whole draft to take a quarterback. They don't get an A. All right, we get, we get through all the teams in the NFC North. Your favorite overall selection. Well, I'm going to go Daniel Braverman. Slot wide receiver going to the Chicago Bears. They got him in the seventh round. To me, it was tremendous value because you look at it, somebody, what, what they're going to have outside. Now, trust me on this. I'm doubling down. Kevin White's going to have a big year. He's healthy. Now you've got Alshon Jeffrey on the other side. All that size outside. Now you got the quickness inside. He's going to eat people up. I'm going to go with Laquan Treadwood. I think a guy we talked to, we all said he was the number one wide receiver on the board. He was the best player. He runs slow. Jerry Rice ran a 5-2. Mm-hmm. You know, we saw what he was able to do. I think Laquan Treadwood goes out there, makes plays. I think we start to see Teddy, Bra- Teddy Bridgewater play better. You see Stephon Diggs do better. You see, I think you see Adrian Peterson. The overall, I think he makes that offense better, which makes that team better. There's yeah. nothing better than when he makes himself laugh. I was going to say, you're giggling. It's it's like, it was, it was, it was a Jerry that. Rice 5-2. It just gets me going. Every you're time, excited about every time I say it, he's gonna, Yeah, every time I say it, he's going to get slower. He's going to run a 6-3 next week.